Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog is a painting by German Romantic artist Caspar David Friedrich, made in 1818. Throughout history, this painting has proven to be one of the most enduring works of German Romanticism. I find it extremely powerful. To me, the painting represents the wonders of the unknown and perhaps the horrors of not exploring the unknown. But as with all paintings, finding meaning in art is easier when you understand the context around the work. So we'll start there. Caspar David Friedrich was a German landscape painter, sometimes considered the greatest German artist of his generation. Friedrich's life was characterized by depression, loneliness, and tragedy. Several of his siblings died during his childhood, as did his mother. During his life, Friedrich had very few friends and rarely left his small studio apartment. He spent most of his years plagued by a deepening depression. Much of his life, Friedrich was also living in poverty and depending on the generosity of his friends and family to just survive. Friedrich himself was part of the Romantic movement. This movement occurred right after the Enlightenment, a period of time characterized by logic, math, and science. The Romantics, like Friedrich, however, were more interested in expressing man's individuality. They valued the beauty and wonder of the world itself rather than searching for some rigid explanation for a sunset or the changing of seasons. Artists like Friedrich didn't care why people felt emotion or what made nature so sublime. Instead, they simply appreciated these emotions and aesthetic experiences. But even among the Romantics, Friedrich stood alone. The aesthetic ideal of the time was a sunset on the Mediterranean or a field of flowers in spring. Friedrich believed that man should not paint what he saw in the outside world, but what he saw inside of himself. Of course, Friedrich's mind was far from a springtime in bloom, so his paintings often focused on cold, dark winters and intensely stark landscapes. In 1818, Friedrich produced his masterpiece. Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog shows a man carrying a walking stick standing on a cliff with his back to the viewer. He overlooks a vast and mysterious landscape which remains obscured by a thick sea of fog. The landscape is entirely fictional and is made up of elements from all across Central Europe. Friedrich composed hundreds of sketches of mountain ranges and coastlines as preparation for this work. The mountains and the rocks in the painting are real formations, but each from entirely different regions of Europe. In the painting, every line leads the eye right back to the figure. So presumably the man is the subject of the work, but simultaneously the landscape in the painting is impossible to ignore. The composition makes the viewer wonder, even if subconsciously, what is the subject of this painting? Is it a painting of a person or a painting of nature? Is it a portrait or a landscape? Like many of Friedrich's paintings, it's both. It's a painting about the relationship between man and his surroundings, be they physical, like those in the painting, or psychological, like we'll discuss shortly. The position of the wanderer is notably important. Traditional art standards, those which were the mainstream sensibility when Friedrich worked, said the subject must always be facing the viewer. But Friedrich's wanderer, of course, has his back to us. This technique, the use of this position, is known as a Rukin figure, translated literally to back figure. The Rukin figure invites the viewer into the painting. The focus then shifts to the viewer themselves. It becomes easy to see oneself in the painting rather than feeling estranged from the work. No face means the Rukin figure could be anyone. Friedrich used this motif time and time again in his paintings, perhaps never more effectively, though, than in Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. It goes without saying that the interpretation of art is pretty subjective. So all I can do is offer what this painting makes me feel and think. Perhaps you can let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. Sometimes people discuss if the wanderer is about to embark on a journey or if he has just finished one. For me, he is almost certainly about to leave. The rocks on which he stand echo the bow of a ship as it pushes through breaking waves. He's also carrying a walking stick, which can symbolize the preparedness one must have prior to a journey. When I look at this painting, I think about the unknown, the importance of charging into the unknown, and even the dangers of leaving it unexplored. The background in the work is staggeringly beautiful, but when you look closer at the landscape, it's really not much there. It's basically nothing. All you can see is 
well, that there's nothing to see. This beautifully rendered yet entirely ambiguous landscape makes me think there can literally be beauty in the unknown. Just like the wanderer, I believe we should be ready to venture forth into this unknown. Not blindly, though. The wanderer appears to be having a moment of self-reflection. Perhaps he is realizing that this journey will change him forever, or that, in fact, he may never return. The wanderer may realize that this journey could last a very, very long time, and that his life, once he's through, will never be the same. And yet, to me, it is undeniable that the wanderer will go forward. He's arrived at the precipice, and his back is towards the past. Despite all of the heavy, irrefutable stakes of this journey, the wanderer will go forward. And with the landscape obscured by such a fog, the wanderer must have full faith in himself. Surely he is thinking that the success of this journey lies on his shoulders alone, and that he is strong enough to bear its weight. Whether this train of thought is reasonable, founded in logic, or even accurate, it's really the only way that the wanderer can afford to think. Because really, what choice does he have but to go forward? The painting very obviously deals with the unknown. But I feel in doing so, it also makes me think of the known, and indeed the dangers of staying comfortable. See, as dangerous as the unknown can be, perhaps the known of life is just as bad. After all, look at what Friedrich knew. Depression, loneliness, and misery. If we spend our entire lives avoiding the unknown, we are stuck with what we do know. Forever. Surely you can't expect to grow as a person while avoiding any unknown quantities. By never going forward into your sea of fog, your future is just the present played on repeat, over and over. Before you know it, you're 80 years old and you're dying the same person you were 60 years ago. I find this just as scary, perhaps even scarier, than wandering into the unknown. Certainly this interpretation takes some liberties. I don't think that Friedrich was necessarily thinking about any of this stuff when he made the painting, but that's just what the imagery makes me think about. A more literal interpretation, I think, also holds value. The relationship between man and nature is a recurring theme in Friedrich's work. Many of his paintings feature the Rukin figure motif juxtaposed with the vast expanse of nature. We see the vastness and the awe-inspiring power of nature. The wanderer himself appears to be young and presumably in fit condition, but can still be no match for the natural world. Even if the wanderer ventures forward into this foggy landscape, we get a sense that he's not really guaranteed to come out of it. This dialogue with nature is also present in Friedrich's other paintings. His piece, The Monk by the Sea, features a tiny figure of a monk looking over a vast, ominous, intimidating seascape. If we take the monk to represent the wisest, most divine, and perhaps most powerful of man, we see that he is still rendered tiny and insignificant by the natural world. In Friedrich's Tomb of the Old Heroes, this message is even more direct. In the painting, we have two tiny, barely discernible figures standing next to a tomb surrounded by a cavernous natural scene. Compared with the landscape, the men seem insignificant and weak. Indeed, the landscape looks like it's swallowing them whole. The tombstone reminds us that not only are humans weak, but we're temporary, while nature is basically permanent. Immediately after being shown, Wanderer Above a Sea of Fog was not well received. For most of Friedrich's work, it went against the prevailing thought at the time. From its use of a Rukin figure to the stark, minimal landscape, there's nothing really cool or fashionable about the painting. And during Friedrich's life, there never would be. Although he was regarded reasonably well amongst German artists, Friedrich's work was never considered masterful during his life. There is an unignorable historical context surrounding Friedrich's paintings, this one especially so. It was painted just after the Napoleonic Wars, which had fractured all of Europe. At the time, Germany was made up of dozens of independent states. Friedrich was a strong supporter of a unified Germany, wanting the country to come together as one after the wars. In this way, it could be said that Friedrich was a nationalist. Hitler and the Nazis would later co-op Friedrich's work a century after he died to represent their version of German nationalism. While Friedrich was a nationalist in a sense of the word, Hitler's adopting of his work was entirely dishonest. See, although very politically active, Friedrich was a liberal anti-authoritarian. He sympathized greatly with students jailed for protesting the autocratic regimes of 19th century Germany. By no means would he have liked Hitler. 
His paintings were most certainly not the nationalist German Empire think pieces that the Nazis pretended they were. And yet, for decades after World War II, Friedrich's legacy was tainted by Hitler's use of his imagery in Nazi propaganda. It wasn't until the 1970s that he re-entered the art world as anything but a pariah. At this point, art historians re-examined his work and realized it really had nothing to do with Hitler or Nazism at all. Ultimately, like all artwork, you can take whatever meaning you want from wanderer over a sea of fog. You can take no meaning at all if the painting doesn't move you. But for me, the work is one of the most profoundly inspiring paintings ever created.